everybody, Leslie here with a question from a follower named Maddie who wonders whether or not her medication could be causing her hair loss and premature gray hair. So this is a really important question because over 50% of adult Americans are on at least one prescription medication. And you do sort of want to know if hair loss and gray hair could be one of the side effects of the medication you're taking. If you talk to your physician, get something else or take some steps to mitigate against it. So that's what we're going to do today. We're gonna to look at Maddie, who's 40 years old. She's on something called Depakote. She has epilepsy and she needs the Depakote, otherwise known as valproate or valproic acid to control her seizures. Now, Depakote is also prescribed for individuals with bipolar and migraines. So this does actually include quite a lot of people. And what I'll say is that, first of all, if I just look at Maddie's age, being 40, she's going to be going into perimenopause. That means that there are going to be a lot of hormonal changes, and that includes thyroid hormone. Now, I've done a lot of videos on the importance of having optimal thyroid health in order to maintain pigment and hair growth. So you can look at those. I won't go into that here, but that could be something that's going on and we'd want to eliminate that before we blame the Depakote for it. In addition, we know that Depakote has a variety of side effects. These range from things like tremors, dizziness, ringing in the ears, and they can also lead to liver dysfunction. So that's something we need to look at because Maddie's 40, she's probably part of the sandwich generation, raising kids, holding down a job, taking care of the household, and possibly dealing with older parents who need her assistance too. So that means she's undergoing a lot of stress and just at the time that her progesterone is also declining, so she's probably not getting great sleep and she's most likely using up that progesterone to make cortisol. Now, if she's under stress, we also know that what happens is her adrenaline is going to be elevated. That's so that she can deal with the, um, with the stressors coming her way. That's the body's fight light or freeze system. And when adrenaline is raised, because you can't expose the heart to adrenaline all the time, it's very bad for the heart, the body converts it into the next, uh, the thing that's the least worst. And in this case, it is actually hydrogen peroxide. Yes, the body can make hydrogen peroxide. It can actually use it to uh, kill off bacteria, but in the case of adrenaline, if the body's looking to dispose of adrenaline, it will convert it first to hydrogen peroxide, same thing that bleaches your hair at the hair salon. So the liver needs to jump into action at this point and using one of the three antioxidants, glutathione, superoxide, dismutase, or catalase needs to neutralize that hydrogen peroxide. If Maddie is undergoing a lot of stress, if the Depakote is potentially compromising her liver just a little bit and she doesn't have one of those three antioxidants to neutralize the hydrogen peroxide, she may experience premature gray hair. But now let's look at the hair loss. And again, hair loss could be tied to just natural thyroid function um, becoming less functional. But um, but I've looked at the statistics and I've seen that if you have, if you're taking Depakote, if you're on a low dose of Depakote, studies say that only around 4% of patients experience hair loss or change in hair texture or um, premature gray hair. But as you increase the dose over 500 milligrams, then you begin to notice very high incidence of hair loss. In this case, 28% of patients experience hair loss. And that is generally after 90 days, they will experience this. Again, looking at Maddie, she's been on this for three years without any issues. All of a sudden, this has kind of happened overnight where each bio-individual, in her case, there could be a lot of other factors coming into play, creating the perfect storm that are leading to the hair loss as well as the premature graying. So what things can Maddie do to mitigate against this? Well, I'd say that she could look at actually supporting her liver by getting more leafy greens, broccoli, uh, avocados. These are all foods that have 
uh, quantities of glutathione, SOD, and catalase in them. Um, I would also have her do a blood test to just check her levels of all her vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. And for instance, there are other studies which show some kind of slight link with valproate and low B6 and B12. And you know from my other videos that low B6 and B12 can also lead to gray hair. Um, this is why, for instance, if you're on Depakote, you cannot get pregnant because there's a higher chance of having children with spina bifida. And that, of course, is linked to um, you know, folate issues, not enough B vitamins. So you could look at that. And then you could also consider going on to a different drug, Maddie. So speak to your physician, see if there is an alternative that might work better for you. One thing that I have discovered that I would love to share with everyone is the work of Dr. Christopher Palmer and also Nick Norwitz at Harvard Med School. Um, they have done some amazing work on ketones and the ketogenic diet and its ability to control, in a number of cases, epilepsy, bipolar, uh, migraines, as well as a host of other neurological conditions that range from addiction, alcoholism, bulimia, depression, schizophrenia. And I highly recommend a book that Dr. Palmer has written called Brain Energy. I think this work is really revolutionary and it's worth looking at. So please do consider that a ketogenic diet is simply where you have to really keep your carbs at a very low level in order to maintain ketones in your body. These are an alternative fuel for your brain's neurons instead of glucose. And they seem to offer cleaner energy for some of the people suffering from these conditions. So those are my tips. I hope that this was a helpful video for those of you who may be taking Deepakote. Please consider sharing with your friends or family members who may be on this medication. And if you like the video, consider subscribing. If you've got a question that you'd like me to answer, and it's not one that I've already answered, please do drop it in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer it for you. Have a great day.